I'm Georgia Simmons and this is the Spoon Meats podcast, the ultimate breakfast companion. Spoon exists to give everyone a better breakfast. They believe the first thing you eat should be the best thing you eat. In this podcast, I'll be sitting down for a tasty seasonal breakfast with experts, thought leaders and creative minds who are shaping the future of food. We are interested to find out all about their seemingly mundane but somehow fascinating morning routines because mornings really do make a difference. Let's get stuck in. Miranda, good morning. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good, thank you. So I hope you're hungry. So I've made us a little breakfast this morning. I have made us a winter spiced date chai pudding. Lovely. Yeah, with some stewed plums, because they're seasonal. Very seasonal. Very I approve. seasonal. You approve. Good. <laughs> Full of pressure. And topped with spoon granola. Of course. Of course. So this morning, we're going to talk all about morning routines, your mornings, typical mornings for you. Um, but how's your morning been so far this morning? Very wet. Very wet. It is very grey and drizzly outside at the moment. It I is. Mean, it is typical England, but I'm still not okay with it. I'm not ready for the winter. <laughs> I'm not ready. It's too long. Winters know, in the UK are too long. Always too long. <laughs> and I know a lot of my kind of fellow food writers love autumn. It's obviously it's great for kind of seasonal produce, that kind of thing. I get it, but yeah. I can never let go of summer. No, I, I'm I the want same. a longer summer. <laughs> Firstly, dig in, enjoy your breakfast. Thank whilst you. I ask you. All your questions about your morning. Amazing. So mornings for you. What do they kind of look like? What's your kind of normal morning routine? Are you a routine person? I'm not. So I'm probably quite a strange person to have on this podcast okay. because I don't really like mornings and I don't like routines. Why? Um, so I don't know. I mean, I'm not really a morning person just in terms of it's not when I feel kind of at my best. It's not when I have the most energy or I'm the most productive, that kind of thing. I like to take mornings quite slowly. Mm. I like to ease into the day. I honestly think it's one of the reasons I'm freelance and that I went freelance, well, I run my own business, but I went freelance at quite a young age. And I honestly think that's one of the main factors. I know that sounds a bit crazy, but having to be in an office at kind of 8 a.m., 9 a.m., whatever the time is, I just knew I wasn't at my best for those kind of first few hours of the day. You know, my kind of, I I don't know if my circadian rhythm is just like shifted. I'm more of a night owl. Okay. And so... Yeah, it's it's honestly one of the reasons that I went freelance, started my own business, was to just be able to structure my day in the way that suited me. And I also just really love variety, um, just kind of day to day and what I do, you know, both in work and in life. So yeah, amazing. I think I kind of rail against routine a little bit. We could I don't be know why there's... in this, and yeah. I love it though, because I am such a routine morning person. Are you? I am so routined in life. Wow. I know we are I'm, complete opposite. Yeah, like I know <laughs> what I'm eating every night of the week, like in advance. No. Yeah. Okay. It's really routine. It's crazy. Um, this is crazy to me because I am, yeah, basically the opposite, the opposite to that. <laughs> so I know every morning is very different for you, and I know then you yeah. ease into your mornings. But I do. Can you explain the average weekday morning? Obviously, you're freelance. Yeah. At home, what does it kind of look like? So I guess, I mean, obviously there's things that we all have to do, like clean our teeth. So it's not like there's never any routine at all. Yeah. But I do tend to, like I said, kind of take it quite easy in the morning. And I know that's a luxury. And I know that that's, you know, because I run my own business and I can do that. Um, But I probably get up and just kind of potter around a little bit, make myself a drink. Um, again I don't have a routine in terms of like coffee or anything like that maybe Mm -hmm. I'll have a hot lemon and ginger something like that Um, just to kind of like hydrate after the night yeah Um, maybe I'll read a little bit maybe I'll I mean I just take a long time over breakfast really I mean I'm you know I'm a food writer and editor so obviously I'm a little bit obsessed with food yeah so I like to take my time over meals yeah including breakfast I, I really don't like kind of grabbing something on the go no So I do often cook myself quite a good breakfast. What does that kind of look like? Again, a lot of variety. variety. I don't eat the same thing every day. Um, So it really varies depending on the time of year. But I would say, I mean, often it can be something simple like, you know, Greek yogurt with berries and nuts and seeds, a bit of granola. Yeah. Um, 
but often I'll have something like eggs so whether it's boiled eggs with you know sourdough and lots of butter and a bit of marmite or it might be scrambled you know something like quite high protein yeah um I've been following do you know glucose goddess on Instagram yeah I find her tips really useful I'm not kind of generally into anything to do with diet and I eat everything and I love variety but I do find her tips on kind of balancing blood sugar really useful yeah and I find if I have a really good breakfast which has protein in it it really sets me up for the day Mm. and just I kind of have more energy and you know you don't get those kind of energy dips and yeah just kind of feel good so that's really important I think even though my breakfast vary a lot I do kind of try and make sure I'm doing something like that but I also will sometimes just eat leftovers like you know yeah some st- a stir fry maybe like fry an egg and put it on top bit oh, of chili wow. sauce I mean I yeah anything and what kind of time do you have breakfast in the morning again obviously it's it will change but <laughs> yeah like not a set time not, not a, a set strict time. schedule um, as you probably guessed no, no strict <laughs> schedule so what time do you get up roughly and what time would you eat breakfast I probably the time I get up really varies but I probably don't eat breakfast until about 10 10 mm-hmm. 30 which I think is probably quite late for most people but I mean, I'll have a drink and stuff before that. But yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't really eat breakfast very early. But that saying that, I still kind of eat lunch at a normal time. So yeah. yeah, I still get hungry. Okay, and then what time would you like get up in the mornings? Do you have an alarm or I don't you... have an alarm, which again I know is a real yeah. luxury. No, this is amazing. <laughs> this, is, this is so refreshing because I know I... you're like, what is this? There's I'm no like, schedule, no alarm. How can you? <laughs> function like I am like <laughs> 6 a.m alarm no matter what I've got going wow. on 6 a.m um, yeah that is my nightmare yeah I know and I'm like why am I doing this don't get me wrong I do snooze in a little bit but then I'm in the gym <laughs> every morning then I'm like wow. breakfast around probably nine like super super routine so yeah. are you um do you do any workouts if you do I'm guessing it's in throughout like later on in the day I will sometimes do maybe kind of 20 minutes of yoga in yeah. the morning um Kind of whether that's before or after breakfast, just yeah, just yeah. something quite gentle mm-hmm. and to start the day. Yeah. Um, I definitely don't feel like doing any kind of cardio or anything early in the morning, no. as you can imagine. But I think it's quite nice to just kind of stretch and just you know kind of feel your body a little bit. And yeah, um, so I'll often do that. I've actually just started doing a little bit of a kind of lymphatic exercise as well, which. Um, I'm not an expert I don't really know much about this but it's really really simple and really quick and you literally just kind of massage and tap like mm. your kind of main lymph areas and yes. it just kind of gets things moving and then you just do some kind of heel drops that's really nice um, and I think that combined with a little bit of yoga it just feels like gets your body kind of going and Definitely. ready for the day because obviously even though my days are varied I'm still often sat down at a computer yeah like a lot of people and yeah I think it's quite nice to just prepare your body a little bit um definitely before you're sitting for a long period of time no I agree I agree I was actually speaking to a skin expert the other week and they were saying like the best way to get glowing skin is movement in Mm. terms of facial movement yeah and the neck is the most important part because that's where it leaves the body like all the toxins leave through the neck yeah so a lot of people will be like doing their I don't know face make um moisturizer in the morning and like tapping their skin mm. which is great but if you're not actually loosening it from the in the rest of your body first yeah it's just not actually gonna do anything which exactly. is so interesting yeah so when would you say you're most productive then in the day what kind of what's your prime time I'd say late morning and then early afternoon mm-hmm. but I can I mean you probably guessed not early morning no. but I can work late if I need to yeah. I think as as I kind of get older and progress in my career I try not to do that I definitely used to do a lot of late nights yeah and I just don't want to do that anymore I definitely no. want more of a balance so yeah yes I probably work a bit later than some people because I my day has shifted slightly yeah but I would say I'm mainly productive late morning and afternoon yeah and yeah that's when I feel at my best and that's when I can get stuff done I love it (laughs) and what about sweet and savory breakfast I mean you mentioned you have both but is it very much of what you're craving at the time or do you have a general I tend to prefer sweet or I tend to prefer savory I do have a sweet tooth Mm -hmm. and I think I used to eat a lot more sweet breakfast yeah I mean when I was a kid I did eat things like pop tarts and you know like those pre-packaged crepe 
chocolate crepe oh kind of God. things. I remember having those in the car on yeah, the way to school. Exactly. Yeah. So I don't even know how I'm alive right now. Just I know. All the, like sugar microwaved in the plastic. Like what? I mean, yeah, it's bad. It was pretty bad. It's pretty bad. And I, I do still have a bit of a sweet tooth, and I do love pastries. Yeah. Croissants. I mean, any pastries basically. Yeah. But I, like I was saying, I think. I am trying to be a little bit more conscious of my health and I think one of the main things is trying to have a savoury breakfast Mm. and just not, yeah, kind of spiking my blood sugar early in the morning and I just feel so much better doing that. So I still eat lots of sweet things, but I try and eat them later. Yeah, no, I get that. (laughs) And what about weekday versus weekend? Like, would you say your mornings change? Obviously, you haven't got the kind of demands of work, but how does your mornings change as you kind of get into the weekend? I guess for me they don't vary as much as most people Mm -hmm. there's not as big a difference because I do have quite leisurely mornings most days Uh, this makes me sound really spoiled but I have I guess built my business around what works for me and that's lifestyle design exactly and that is a benefit of running your own business of course there's pros and cons you know it's it's less stable there's you know there's a lot of stress that goes with running your own business so I always feel like you need to really take advantage of the pros Mm. and lean into those yeah so yeah I guess my weekday and weekend mornings are quite similar that's nice even more leisurely at the weekend even more leisurely (laughs) I can just kind of sounds like I don't do any work in the kitchen (laughs) I love it and I do ha- love to kind of go to a bakery or something like that. Yes. Weekend, you know, that is walk along nice. to a nice independent bakery, buy yeah. a croissant, like, you know, a nice fresh loaf of bread. So oh, yeah, I lovely. think that that's maybe the, the side of things that changes. And what about um, your favorite bakery? Do you have any recommendations? Oh my gosh, so many in London. I re- So I lived in Bermondsey for about 12 years mm. and... Uh, I mean, very spoiled around there. A lot of good food. Yes. And I lived really close to Little Bread Peddler. Never heard of it. So good. I think they. I think their sourdough is some of the best in London. Okay, I really, try really good. Um, I also love E5 Bakehouse. I haven't tried this um, either. You need I'm to, missing out. I need, need to go. eat more baked goods. I do. Um, but yeah, we are quite spoiled. Okay. Here, so my favourite at the moment is Bread Ahead. Yeah. Um, there's one on Pavilion Road, and I love their uh-huh. um, pan au chocolat with pistachio. Oh, wow! That does sound good. Elite combination. Yeah, that amazing. Does sound good. <laughs> so you obviously are freelance, and you've got at the table, you've got a creative agency, yeah. and you do food writing. How yes. do you balance it all? That is a good question. I guess because I've been either freelance or self-employed for quite a long time now. I maybe don't think about it that much it's probably something I struggled with at first but I think once you've been doing it for a long time you naturally start to realize how you can balance things and you just I think you just have to reassess each day yeah that's kind of how I do it like each day okay what's the priority what needs my focus and you just have to constantly be doing that and I think when you've been doing it a long time it starts to become instinct yeah Yeah. and does your job with food writing affect what you end up eating oh I'm sure it does yeah like subconsciously I'm sure I mean I probably eat so especially my books the food almanac Mm -hmm. one and two they are all about seasonal food and so putting those together I think I'm even more focused on eating seasonally now yeah Um, not just because it's you know good for the planet and it's usually more local that kind of thing but also it just tastes better it does you know it fresh really seasonal does. food just it has more flavor mm. so i completely agree i'm plant-based and i think the reason why i don't lack in any of my vitamins and minerals because i recently did a test and i was mm-hmm. like make sure i am all okay and i yeah. was and i think the reason why i do that or because everything's fine is because i eat seasonally and it's so mm. packed with nutrients yeah that i am getting and also the variety like i do eat such variety of foods although I know what I'm having in advance (laughs) I I make sure there's variety there I think that's why I do it because I plan it so well like oh okay so this this, this, and this even breakfast like I have a smoothie then I have granola and yogurt then I have porridge I am a sweet person for Mm. breakfast um but yeah I think it's because eating so seasonally you are packed with so many nutrients yeah which is great definitely well thank you so much for joining me this morning in this little catch-up we're now going to enjoy our breakfast Thanks to Spoon, we've got a lovely granola topped chai pudding, so we'll enjoy that. But thank you so much for joining me.